Hey guys, welcome back to the Lagon Lodge. Ranger Jason Bentley coming at you. Today's video that I'm going to share with you is about ornithology. Ornithology, it's the study of birds. Sometimes this stuff's for the birds, literally. It's okay. Birding is one of my favorite things to do, guys. It doesn't matter if it's summertime, wintertime, there's always birds around that we can see. Some of our birds are resident birds, some of them are seasonal birds. Well, what does that mean, resident or seasonal? Are they here year round or are they just here in the summertime for, for their nesting and the raised chicks? So some birds we can see all the time, some we only see at certain periods of the year, like in the summer. So now's a great time to get out and see all of our summer birds that are back, all of our warblers are coming back, all the really pretty birds that have lots of bright colors are back. Um, but hey, don't forget about those residents that are still out there. Don't forget about them because they, they're still here. How do I get to see the birds, Ranger Jason? What's the process? Well, you got to go out and look for them, first of all. Can you see them? Most of the time I hear them before I ever see a bird. I will hear their song. So if you can figure out their songs and their calls, you can determine the birds a lot quicker than seeing them. That's a little bit trickier to do. You really have to, to practice up to learn your bird calls. But by visually seeing them, you're gonna need a few things to help you along. I always carry around a pair of binoculars with me when I'm going birding, and that helps me focus on one small area. It helps magnify that in and bring that in. Obviously, not everybody has a pair of binoculars. That's okay. Sometimes you can make your own binoculars. You might not have magnifying lenses on them, but it will help you focus your field of vision down into a narrowed area where that bird's at. So you're just looking at that area. So I'm gonna share some links on where you can buy some binoculars. I'm gonna share a link on how to identify the birds. Some books, some simple student books here, all the way up to some more difficult Peterson field guides that have a lot more details in there. So simple guides, more in-depth guides, your choice. I'll share some links on there where you might be able to purchase these items yourself if you want to. Maybe you know somebody that you can borrow one off of. So libraries are opened up, you can go down to the library and check out some bird books at the library and borrow those for a while, and that's okay too. But the main thing with birding is you have to use all of your senses. You have to pay attention, you have to use your eyes, you have to use your ears, and you have to be quiet and sit still. You can't run through the woods making a lot of noise and expect all the animals to be there. So if you're not seeing birds or you're not hearing birds, sit still, wait, they'll come around. Maybe you like to draw them in and watch them. I feed the birds up at my house year round. I keep feeders out, love feeding all the birds in the winter time, keeping them happy. In the summertime, I'll still keep some food out, put feed the hummingbirds this time of year. So you can set up feeding stations at your house to help draw them in and get a better look at it. And if you follow some links, I'm gonna share some, uh, some real simple do-it-yourself bird feeders ideas that you can put out right in your own bag. Here on the side of the lodge at the cabin here at Lagan, we have a bird that's been building a nest in this spot for years. Uh, as long as I've been coming to Lagan, I've been uh, living here for 25 years and there's always a bird nest here on this window frame. This is an Eastern Phoebe and they build a nest uh, that clings to the side uh, almost like a swallow's nest would be. Um, it'll, it'll cup onto the side there. So as you can see, this is just a bunch of mud, moss. There's a little bit of uh, pine needles in there. But the cup, the opening of the nest is way up in there. And I'm not sure if there's any chicks in there or not because it's... I've never seen her build one so high. They typically only build them about that high. But I think it kept falling off of this ledge. So this bird is really ramp that thing up pretty pretty far uh, but I'm gonna see if there's any chicks in there and I don't have a mirror but see if I can use my phone see got five eggs in there they've not hatched yet and that is the bird that is our emblem on the Lagan sign out front that's a Phoebe and they bob their tail like this when they sit on a branch that's a telltale sign of an Eastern Phoebe so let's go see what else we can discover that's an American robin. That's our state bird. That's uh, every state has a represented state bird, state tree, state mammal, state rocks, gem, that sort of thing. Every state has something that represents them. Michigan, our state bird is the uh, American robin. 
And that's an easy one to identify. Almost everybody knows what the robins look like because they're very common. They come back in the spring. That's our sign of spring. Um, they like to eat earthworms. You'll see them out in your yard on wet, rainy mornings uh, looking for earthworms to eat. They may stay up until November-ish is before they leave for their migration, but they usually start coming back even when the snow's on the ground. So uh, southern part of Michigan, you may see them as early as late February. Uh, I noticed ours came back this year around uh, mid-March. So they were, they were back not too, too late. All right, good luck guys. Get out there and start looking for the birds.